Uh, hi, can I get a large black coffee, please? Okay, anything else? That's it, thanks. Thank you. Right now I'm in North Bay. Uh, I just finished shooting a fishing show with a friend of mine who's got a fishing show for television. He needed an extra cameraman, so I came up and helped him uh, on another lake, uh, Nasbonsing, Nasbonsing, something like that, and uh, at uh, Big Moose Camp. While I'm up here, I figured, I figured we'd go over to maybe Rastul uh, Provincial Park and uh, do a campground thing because we haven't done that yet and I wanted to try it out, see if there's any good hikes in that area and, and uh, maybe cook our own food. So I'm gonna get my coffee, then I'm gonna look to see what's between here and there and see if we can find one of those country stores and uh, pick up some food. Then we'll hit up the campground. Hello, thank you. Last coffee, thank you. Thank you. All right, we've got our fuel. I'm gonna uh, pull over, enjoy this coffee and then uh, I'll find, I'd like to find like a country store kind of thing. I might just have to do my shopping here and then we'll uh, drive down to Rastul and uh, have a good little uh, afternoon, evening. Thanks for coming along with me. Well, I figured before we leave uh, North Bay that I should hit up this uh, no frills here and get a few supplies that I think maybe a little country store might not have. Let's go. Face coverings, mandatory. Grab some marble cheese. English muffins. Debbie, to the front end, please, Debbie. Crackers, butter, eggs, bacon, mm, chipotle sauce. One more thing. I like two more things and marshmallows. I think that's everything we need. All the shopping is done. Now we just gotta go to uh, get to the campground, see if we can get a good sight. I'm just gonna put all the stuff away. That doesn't need to be cold butter. Cheese, chipotle might as well fill up the fridge, bacon, doing all this one-handed people. Might as well put the chocolate in there, definitely the eggs, and hot dogs. I'm going to put the bread in there, might as well put the marshmallows in there. Don't need everything in there, but needed to fill it up a bit. All right, so that stuff can stay there. Make sure this is closed. Good to go. Plug it into the Jackery. Got lots of juice. She's working. Made sure she's plugged in the right way. Not heat, but cold. All right, let's go camping. All right, plug it in the coordinates, Waze, great program, go now. And I think it's an hour and seven minutes away, 77 kilometers, let's go. through the little town of Rastul and uh, then we had to go to the provincial park called Rastul 
And uh, what I did notice is I forgot one thing, one item. And so we're gonna have to hit up the uh, little general store. I forgot beans. I need beans. If we're gonna have hot dogs, we're gonna have beans. So we'll hit the little general store right here. Whoa, almost went past it. We'll grab some beans and then we'll have the perfect amount of food for tonight. Western beans. Hmm. Brown sugar, hickory. Do it. Typical general store out in the country. They've got everything from electrical work stuff and then pop, groceries, of course. Hmm. put that in the fridge but I realized that these cookies have chocolate on them so I should put them in the fridge too nice and cold in there good job okay you can go there put you away to keep all that stuff together 95% cool to Rastool Provincial Park. Check this out guys, all the trees are getting their fall colors. We're getting oranges and yellows. I saw a red tree back there. So yeah, fall is here. It is coming. Look at that orange tree straight ahead. Beautiful. All right, we are now entering the park area. I just have to go in and, oh, caution bears in area. Hmm. So I just gotta park it and then uh, get a camping spot. Hello. Hi, how are you? All right, how are you doing? Good, how can I help you? I was wondering if you had a campsite available for me tonight. Just for one night? Yeah. Hopefully maybe on the water or something if there is anything. All right, got my site, and that's the good thing about coming midweek, late September, is you can choose your site, which is fantastic. She uh, kind of picked one out for me. I just have to get the wood from there and some kindling, and then we're good to go. Here's some of the things I got. I got a ceramic mug which says Rastool on it. I'll probably keep this in Rusty, and that will be my coffee mug for the morning. Uh, here's a site map. And I am going to be in 249. She said I could pick any one of those for tonight. Uh, if I choose to do a different one, just don't set up. <laughs> just come back and tell her which one I moved to. And then you have uh, these things where you, this is going to be my campsite, 249. You got to put one of those on the dashboard and the other one on the post when you get there. I also bought this sticker. We'll stick that on my next camping vehicle not rusty i don't want to put too many stickers on rusty i want to wait till we get another vehicle so the site is 42 dollars for the night dollar 25 for the sticker mug was 15 bucks uh and then i guess that's almost eight dollars for the firewood and kindling is like almost seven dollars so this is the wood shed <laughs> so uh, i guess we grab a thing of kindling and then a big bag of wood this one looks good hope it doesn't rain too much tonight I'm not going too far with this stuff so, so camping in the Ontario provincial parks is much more expensive than I thought all right let's go get our spot 249 yeah, so this campground closes, uh, she said, I think two weeks after Thanksgiving, our Canadian Thanksgiving. So like mid-October, this place closes down for the winter. But there are some winter campsites, and uh, one's on Pigeon Lake. So 
I can't wait. This you can get some water and you can dump if you had a an RV, you can dump your sewage there. Yeah, I look forward to doing a couple winter camps with you guys in Rosti. See if we can stay warm. No burning dead wood. So the stuff that's in the bushes, you're not allowed to burn it. Stay to the left. Beautiful up here, man. There's a comfort station, so if you want to use flush toilets and have a good shower, that's where you go. Uh, chances are where I'm going to be, it'll probably be like a, an outhouse type thing. Uh, I should have turned. So keep our eye open for 249. These guys are all set up. Nice. Should be this should be 249. 249. There she is. Okay. Left the keys in there. So 249's here. But again, she gave me a bunch of options. This is a nice big site. If I had a tent and all that stuff, lots of room to set up. You could definitely park a couple cars here if you came with buddies, family members, whatever. We've got a nice little fire pit, which we'll be using tonight. We've got two picnic tables. Uh, I'll probably set up like this uh, if I use this site. I'm gonna go look around, see what the other sites look like. Did a little walk down that way, and uh, 255 is has a better view through the trees of the lake, but uh, the difference between sitting right here right now is there's way less wind. Over there, it's very windy. Let's just go quickly check our, I guess, lake frontage. There's a little path right here, and this will take us to probably the beach or maybe just a little spot on the lake. Oh, very nice. Got some rocks here so you don't slip. Ah, my own little private spot. Look, it's pouring rain over there. It's drizzling here right now. So there is a nice sandy beach over there. And obviously you can swim off the dock if it was the water temperature was good. I'm not sure how cold that water is right now. But uh, yeah, pretty spot. And then if you had your own beach chairs and stuff, you could just set up here. Now that we're here, I'm gonna unpack a little bit. Well, it keeps raining off and on, and uh, I don't want to start a fire, and then it just starts to downpour. Uh, we might have to like try to figure it out between rain, little rain showers, but uh, I'll get the table out and things. I put the wood underneath the, the vehicle to stop that from getting wet, uh, and I have that newspaper. So I'm gonna get the table out, set up stuff, but it's gonna have to be a quick tear down, put into the van kind of uh, adventure in this one. So I'm gonna uh, open up that side window to get my table out and stuff. Yeah. See, it stopped raining again. It just keeps coming on and off. It's like somebody's up there turning it on and off like a shower. So we have my little table. We'll need that. If I open that door, everything gets stuck, so I don't, I just leave it. It's still raining a little bit, but I think if I use this table here, it's got some shelter from the rain coming through. Uh, and this is actually not bad dry right now. Uh, and I'll just pull it maybe a little bit closer to the fire and we can utilize this table. And uh, definitely gonna start that fire. I'll do the beans on this thing. I'm just going to keep it closed just in case it starts to rain again. And I got to get this fire started. We'll need this. Got our spider weenies. And then our beans. Get that ready. This is going to be our hot dog spider weenie thingy. So that's kind of cool. It's got two handles you can slide that one handle up if you need to hold this end a little bit more secure i'll show you how that works later
using my Leatherman Super Tool that Paul gave me many, many years ago for my birthday. Uh, it's got everything from pliers to snips to files, everything, screwdrivers. Uh, you can even like cut, it's even got like a saw on it. Uh, we will definitely be using this can opener. That's how we're gonna open our can. Got some wood that I'm gonna have to make a bit smaller. So that's a good size, but uh, I'm gonna have to get out the knife. So all these little bits and pieces are gonna help get my fire going. They'll burn a little bit hotter than paper and then help catch the larger pieces of wood. All right, let's get this fire going. I always like to start with two logs on the side. I'm gonna put a lot of paper in here, the shavings, and then put a lot of the smaller uh, kindling across, and that's how I like to make my fires. Wood shavings. Note to self, next time, bring an axe. Or at least a hatchet, so I can break up. And look up, look at the size of that kindling. That would be so much more usable if I could break it down a little bit more. But this is what we got. There we go, we got our newspaper, the shavings, and then all nicely spaced apart for the air to get into. And these hold the whole thing up and eventually we'll be pushed into the fire for later. that catches, then we can eat. Looks like this method is working well. All that wood is now caught fire. The paper is completely burned up. Lots of air getting underneath there. Getting those logs to ignite. And now it's as soon as it gets a little bit hotter, then we'll do our weenies. Okay, I guess the next thing I should be doing is getting this thing going. It's been a very long time since I had to open a can of beans with this tool, but uh, you just put this on the bottom end, and then you push it in. Can you guys see that good? Just work your way around. First place I learned this was Ecuador. <laughs> I've always had like the the one you would turn yourself and or the or an electric one. But uh, Ecuador they would use a knife and a rock. A lot of a lot of houses, a lot of locals. How many of you guys have ever opened a can like this? Probably a lot of campers maybe. Doing good. Get in my little camping chair. Put on a bigger log, get that going. Maybe two. Perfect. Beans are going. All the extra ketchups all the restaurants have been giving us, those are gonna come in handy right now. Just gonna cut the wiener midway, try to keep even. Then you turn it a quarter and so it's gonna all fan out. A lot of you guys know what spider weenies are. I'm 
you got this little device. You stick that on there. It's going to be a little bit backwards because usually it's going to point the other way. But so we got one. Turn. Put that one on there. These were a lot of fun to do with the kids back in the day when we all used to camp together. Spider weenies ready to go. Stir. And you just start to turn. Again, this, this is what this thing is for. So th this is gonna get hot, right? So you can hold that out like that and then just turn it. The more cooked these guys get, they'll start to curl and turn into spiders. You guys can see now that the wieners are starting to curl. These guys are done. Let's go eat. Beans are ready, nice and hot. I just put this right into the slot here of the uh, picnic table, which is perfect. I'm just going to put this off to the side. We got our beans. Mmm. Oh, those are good. It's not gonna start raining on us, is it? I'm gonna eat fast. Might be uh, going to bed early tonight if it starts raining like that. Okay, that's good. So you can just put some ketchup on your spider weenie and munch away. Oh man, it's been a while since I've done campfire hot dogs. Thanks for all your suggestions and a few videos will go when I ask you guys about this. I could, oh, there we go. Okay, we could put it on something and then dip what might be a little bit better. Hang on, hang on. Now we can dip our weenie. <laughs> this is awesome. Ketchup on wieners. If I had mustard, I'd use it. I don't have any mustard. Got some water, got my spoon. Time to try these brown sugar hickory baked beans. Give them a shot, hoping it's cooled down enough. Man, it's the first time I ever had those. They're pretty good, man. Sweet. And definitely has that hickory flavor to it. Okay, next weenie. Break off a piece. Dip into our ketchup. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice, nice and char. <laughs> Those were a lot of fun to cook. I might do a couple more. Although I think I'm going to be full by the time I finish this can of beans. So let everybody know in the comments below what your favorite camp food is. Cooking over the campfire or on a stove. Start writing. I'm going to keep on eating. All cleaned up. Put my stove away. Cleaned up all the dishes. Washed them all. Put them back in their pro proper spots. Uh, I'm just going to knock this down and make sure it's not burning. Uh, and then we'll go for a quick bike ride and just do a bunch of stuff around Rastul. And uh, then we'll come back here and have a beer with you. Fire is out, time to go for a ride. starting to rain but we'll still we'll go for a little bit longer unless it starts raining heavier very 
nice beach. They still have the swimming pylon things to keep people safe. It's shallow there, it gets deeper, I guess, off the edge of that. Very nice. Got some Canadian geese hanging out over there. Very nice, that mist in the background. to another beachy area. I have a nice long dock here and uh, you can rent canoes and kayaks. There's numbers on them so and there's locks. So you probably have to go to the uh, the office. They'll give you a lock, tell you what number, where it is parked uh, and then you just uh, unlock it, go for a ride. Today's not really a good day for a canoe ride but uh, in the future we'll be doing stuff like that with you guys and kayak rides. Let's continue with our bike ride. That's the dock I was just on. Here are the canoes for rent and there's a kayak on the other side. There's some more kayaks there. Paddle boards over there too. So yeah, they just tell you what number. You unlock it, take it for a spin, lock it back up. Don't have to drag it back and forth to your campsite. Very convenient. This is definitely one of the nicest campsites. 432 is the number. It's got lots of little wood space for the kids to run around. It's got two picnic tables. It's got access to the water. Fantastic. Back at the campsite. Time for a beer. Oh yeah. Nice and cold. Baruski. I'm going with Bud Light today. Why not? Cheers everyone, thanks for hanging out with me on my videos. Another awesome fire. If I, this thing also has this thing I can flip over. And just wash that off. Put your hot dogs on there or your steaks or whatever you want. And uh, you can cook right here. My bike ride was about uh, seven and a half kilometers. I've burned about 600 calories so far today, just my exercise ring. And uh, But now it's time to do the s'mores. I'm going to get the stuff and we'll come back here and cook them up. So there's a couple ways you can do s'mores. Uh, you can use a graham cracker. You can put a piece of chocolate on the graham cracker. Uh, put that really close to the fire so the chocolate melts on top of that. While that's doing that, you put a, a large marshmallow on your, on your uh, hot dog skewer or a stick, whatever. Toast it up and when it gets all nice and brown on the outside, you put it uh, on top of the chocolate, then you put another graham cracker on top, squish it together and eat it. Uh, this is a easier way of doing it because uh, it's already got the chocolate on it. So all you need to buy is this and this. Uh, if you want to save some time from doing this, unless you have your favorite chocolate, uh, then I suggest you buy your favorite chocolate and do it with this. But uh, this is definitely a different way of doing it. Once again, you don't need to melt this one though either. You just have to toast your marshmallow, put it on the chocolate side. There's chocolate on both sides. Turn the chocolate side down on the top of the next one, and away you go. I'm gonna do it the easy way first with the family digestives. So it's starting to rain, so I'm like, I almost had to put everything away, and then it kind of stops, and so I'm just gonna go for it. You guys can hang out with me. So I'll do one with the cheat, the cheat version. All these boxes are gonna get all wet. Okay, so, uh, so that's gonna be ready for that. And then we're gonna do two, no, just one. One marshmallow, turn that over. I wish they had like one sticking out this end so you could do marshmallows off because it's kind of weird doing it here. Anyway, let's just do it. I'm gonna slowly roll your marshmallow, get it nice and warm so it melts inside first. Patience is your friend people so as you can see it's already browning nicely Ooh, it's getting toasty 
I did this with my wife just recently when we camped in Algonquin Park. And I put a picture up on my social media. Is that a perfectly toasted marshmallow so far? I don't like burning my marshmallows. See how gooey it is already? Is that good or what? Look at that side. Oh yeah. It's kind of hard to uh, get this side because it's on this weird rack. Whoa, it's gonna fall off. Holy cow. Try really hard. You pinch it together like this and that way you don't have to touch the really hot skewer or the marshmallow. And then you just gotta slowly pull the stick out. Hopefully it stays in there. Oh my goodness. Look at that gooey, sloppy mess. Look at that s'more, people. Yummy. It's awesome. It's gonna be too hot, isn't it? Nope. Mmm. Very good. Very sweet. Very gooey, very messy. But if you've never done s'mores while camping, I highly suggest you do it. And if you don't want to have too many steps, this is the cheat version. Mm. We've been doing this for years, so I can't wait to do that one to see which one's better. I'm thinking the traditional one's better, but this one's easier. Awesome. Now we're gonna use the uh, graham crackers. So it comes in like four pieces, just break it in half and that's gonna be your full s'more. I'm gonna put the chocolate on there. Let's put it like that. Hopefully the heat comes through. It is quite warm there. Maybe by the time we, that's gonna, that's a lot of chocolate. Maybe I should have, hang on. Let's bite a piece off. There we go. That'll be better. I'm gonna put our marshmallow back on our skewer start cooking. Got a nice radiated heat coming out. I'm so glad it's just not continuing to rain. It's giving me these little breaks so I can do these little cooking segments for you guys. Oh, here it comes again. Oh, rain, rain, go away. I'm going to go a little more toasted this time. You can see when it gets jiggly on the stick, that's when you know it's very gooey inside there. But I'm gonna go for a little bit more golden brown. See if the artistic candomic shines through on this one. It's just, it's just spinning around. Look, it's not even moving, but uh, I definitely toasted. Whoa, don't fall off. I definitely toasted uh, the other side really nicely. Um, hmm. Look at this, it's starting to fall apart. Oh my gosh, I can actually do this one-handed. Look at this. Wow, look at that artistic man here. Oh my goodness, please don't fall, please don't fall. Look at that chocolate, it's already melting. Oh my gosh, one-handed s'more. We'll put that right on top, oh my goodness. Squish it down just a little bit. Hopefully the bottom's not too hot. Look at that perfectly cooked gooey s'more and the chocolate is melting which is good all right going in i just noticed that the marshmallow now has melted it has helped melt the chocolate and uh that looks so good oh boy all right let's munch this before it gets even more melted mm-hmm wow no. Yep. This way, 10 times tastier. Wow. Mm. Definitely messy, but again, depending on where you're from, you might want to use Hershey bars, you might want to use uh, dairy milk. Uh, every single chocolate will change the flavor of this amazing camp treat. That thing was just beautiful. Well, I had an awesome time with you guys here today. Uh, I'm going to clean up all this stuff and uh, get my, my camper ready for bed. And uh, we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for all your support on this channel. Ciao.